Hey, coaches, welcome back. Football talk with Coach Chip. Trying to get one out at least once a week right now at this time of year. Going to try to keep it rolling right on through the end of spring as y'all get ready for spring and, and summer. Don't forget, be sure to share Football Talk with Coach Chip. And also be sure to subscribe. I know for a fact, because we can look at these things, I don't understand them, but people tell me what it means is, yeah, you've got more viewers. You've got people viewing that aren't subscribing. Go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Also, click the bell. It doesn't cost anything. You won't get spammed. All that will happen is if you click the bell, when I put new content up, you'll get an alert. That way you won't miss anything. Okay. All right. Now, today, this is totally fantasy. I was uh, looking at old film and, and saw an old Oregon game, not that old, 2020. You could tell it's 2020 on the touchdown when they show the, uh, the end zone shot. People in the stands, there's a bunch of cardboard cutouts. And uh, Joe Moorhead was the OC of the Oregon Ducks. And you can see the formation right here in the upper right-hand corner and right here in the lower right-hand corner. It's a quads over, okay? And then I got to thinking about, hey, can we make it quads over empty, okay? And just started toying around with it. And I, I totally, I mean, you're going to see the video of the play being run. And then we're going to take it in another direction. And then also I got the great idea, I'm being sarcastic, of putting it out there on Twitter and on, on the social medias, on Football Talk with Coach Chip on Facebook, at Chip Siegel on Twitter, of uh, asking y'all, how would you line up against it? You know, and I got a ton of responses and I tried to use, you know, there's only so many ways you can line up to it. And so I'm not going to call any names of some different coaches simply because some of y'all had almost identical alignments. And I don't want to leave anybody out, but you'll see yours probably. If you sent one to me, uh, you know, through uh, siegel.chip at, at gmail.com, or you shared it through the DMs or just posted on Twitter. I had a couple of guys just brave enough to put it out there for God and everybody to see. You know, I don't know. I may be, I'm, I may be libeling or slandering God by saying he's on Twitter, but they put it out there for everybody. And, uh, and so I took a bunch of these and I put them in at the end. We're going to see how you would line up to this quads overlook and then also what i did with the empty by putting this i took my running back and put him here and then the z which is here i put him over here or right here depending on how you look at it all right let's look at the video and then talk about it. i'm going to show you some diagrams of some things that a twisted mind talking about me went and done okay now you can see this is quads over. It's not empty. And they do a really cool thing. They're going to run zone. They're going to run zone read. They're going to open up over here and read this guy right here at the DN. They're going to run zone. Okay. But then there's a secondary read that turns it into an RPO. And I know this is the reason I say it's fantasy is most of us, including me, don't have the quarterback that necessarily do it, but it's pretty cool. And also it's a great intellectual exercise, mental exercise. It's the kind of thing that when you're sitting around at a clinic, you know, at the hotel bar, uh, and you got the pen and the legal pad or the or the napkins that you play with. And just kind of a fun way to do this. Here we are in the middle of April, getting ready for spring training. And I just thought it'd be fun to play around with this. All right, let's look at it. Let's see if I can get it to play. So you reach the DN. All right, here it comes from the end zone shot. And we'll go back. And it was such a good fake that it actually faked out the cameraman. That's why we don't have a good uh, from the end zone shot. Right, what you're going to see, he married, and Moorhead's brilliant. Moorhead's brilliant. I hope he does well up at Akron. And... Uh, you know, I just love to see, and you see what he's done when he gets in a place where he can get the athletes. I don't know what happened in Mississippi State, but uh, SEC is a different beast. But what they're going to do, they're going to run zone right. Quarterback's going to open up here, going to read this cat here. If he squeezes, he's going to disconnect. Now, remember, if they're running, 
Okay, if they are running, they're running zone anyway. So if he gives it, what the heck, you know? All right, then if this guy squeezes, then his eyes go right here. And this cat is coming here. Boom. Okay. And you got the bubble right here. Stalk, stalk. And so it's really triple option, maybe even quadruple option when you think about it. You got the option to give. All right, then you got, he can run it. So that's your second option. Then you got a third option, you know, throw the RPO here. Or even a fourth option, throw the bubble here. Okay. So there you see the squeezer. Excuse me. They were reading this guy. That was the second guy he was reading. Okay. So they're reading this guy. Is it run or is it keep? Okay. Then his eyes come to this guy. Does he take this H? So this H comes out like he's going to block him. And boom. When you see the end zone shot, you got to look fast because, like I said, they fake the cameraman out. You can see the safety turns his back, okay, because he's playing bubble. Pretty cool. Look right there. Buck naked wide open as the day he was born. Okay. There's your first read. He's coming right here. So that tells quarterback to keep it, and he comes here. Eyes come to this overhang, and what does he do? He comes in here, and that leaves the H48 wide open on the little hot seam, as I like to call it. He looks like he's out to practice early, doesn't he? See what I mean? They fake the cameraman slam out. There you go. I mean, what do you do? All right, let's look at some of that. Now, then I got the fantasizing. Let's look at this. All right, now, this is the way Joe Moorhead ran it versus UCLA back in 2020 when he was the OC at Oregon. Note, this isn't my defense. This isn't anything y'all sent in. This was the what UCLA was in, okay? And I know now you can look at it and second guess it. Now, imagine, if you will, they're in a position. They're in the high, high red zone. And... Uh, Maybe UCLA's DC felt like he was lined up okay. You know, he had he had two over these two, this guy here over the top, you know, which to me, if this guy here is any good, the slot, this guy here, he's not in position to make a play. If you get two blocks here, you're looking at a four or five yard game. All right. And it, remember, it's an RPO. So obviously it was an R, it was a rundown. All right, so, and this is what they did. All right, same concept that we could do, you know, to say you don't like zone, run the power read scheme that we've done on here before, okay, where you're still reading that DN, okay, and you're blocking right here. If you're, if you're a gap scheme person and not a, a zone person, you can run this concept if you've got the trigger man back here to do it and run the power read. So if this guy squeezes, disconnect, Eyes come here. And I honest to God think, especially at our level, and I'm talking even the big high school level, I'm not talking about small school ball where you got kids going both ways. I think even your big 5A, 6A, 7A teams, that you could just go ahead and make it a one-way read. Okay? Just read one guy and just know this guy here is going to react. Okay, this is great. To me, 10 going in. Okay, because this safety has got to react to that bubble. Okay, you just start throw the dang bubble. But I think you can take this out just knowing this guy is going to react to run, in my opinion. What do you think? All right, but anyway, you block in right here. And uh, if this, so this guy squeezes, you disconnect. Now you're coming out here. This guy takes away, let's say we're doing the RPO. If he takes away the H on the hot, Quarterback, just keep it and run right here. I'm telling you, this safety's gone. And for whatever reason, this safety comes screaming right here. Flip that joker out there. We're three on two now. Okay, same concept again. Same reads. Nothing's changed. But now using GT. Let's say you're a GT counter scheme. I know a lot of guys, I mean, they base 
the, the spread guys, they're, the small schools are not really good at zone blocking, and GT counter is their play. It's not even a counter the way they run it. I mean, there's no counter in the backfield. They're just blocking it like counter up front, and a lot of them reading this defensive end right here to account for the six man in the box. You can throw this in there. And again, if you don't like the dual read, take this read out of it and just say, hey, we're going to read this guy right here. You know, if he disconnects, boom. Heck, I think you can just block the dang thing solid, make it a quick, just fake right here, boom, then hit his butt. I really do. All right, what if we add a jet motion? This is where the twisted mind, and y'all know how much I love jet. I'm gaga about jet. Okay. I'm not saying fake jet. I'm not saying read it. I'm not saying anything like that. Either run jet or don't run jet, but run this jet fake with jet motion and then run the same cockeyed play. Now you're taking this guy out and putting him over here, the one that was running the bubble. And now your outlet is this screen right here and you're coming right here. Okay. He said, what about this guy come running down through here? I'm telling you, you can pre-snap this joker. If this cat right here comes running down right here on the jet motion, tell him to take, you know, let the jet motion be the fake and then ride this guy and just stand up and throw it. This guy's going to be buck naked because this guy's, this, the, uh, Sam here, when he sees this jet motion, he's going to react. Have your H come out, buzz his feet, put his hands up, maybe even bang this guy. Make him think he's trying to get reached. He's coming promise okay you can even make it a read where you read this guy that this guy doesn't come you can pre-snap that joker if he doesn't start spinning down on the snap you can just call jet if he stays back give jet if he spins down fake jet and then throw this because i'm telling you sam's coming all right so i started thinking and came up with all this crazy stuff right, i came up with this idea here this is where the jet motion comes in Okay. All right. Fake jet, but the same reads as before. Talked about that. Now you got, you're doing it out of true empty. See, that's where I got to thinking. Take the running back out, put him over here. Same formation, except now instead of a running back, you've got a guy over here. Now they've got to account for him. And again, I'm just guessing how they would line up. This is the way I drew it up. It, it doesn't mean anything. Because in my opinion, you tilt the field. You tilt the field, put corner over. And I had one guy that said, like, why would you even cover this guy? Well, you're not covering him. You're accounting for him. So understand, this is like a split unbalance. He's still a blocker. Heck, when Gus Malzahn does it, I don't know if he does it in Central Florida, but for years when he was a high school coach and he coached at Arkansas State, Auburn, he would put a lineman out here so this guy would be eligible. He would take one of his tackles and put them out here, and his tight end or H would be right here. He'd be eligible. Now, if they start running with the motion, boom, you got a guy open here. See, the point is you got to account for this guy, not in pass coverage, but in run support because you've created gaps. Okay, look, outside of the H, you still got one. Whoops, my fault. Okay, you still got one, two, three, four, four run gaps that have to be accounted for. You've got to have people that can fit in those gaps, just like you got to have guys that can fit in here. Does that make sense? It's not that you're going out here to cover this joker in case of a pass. Now, one guy made a great point. I think it was on Twitter. No, it was on Football Talk with Coach Chip on Facebook that you could use him as a read. If he comes off, you know it's a run. Okay? And if he goes back, which is the way we did it for years when we run this formation, and we ran this formation a lot. I love it. I'd come out of a timeout, start a drive, Start, start a quarter, you know, we had a quarter break in the middle of the drive, come out in this. And sometimes you'd make them burn a timeout. Uh, you, we did it so much, teams were prepared for it. You know, they lined up, wouldn't call a timeout, but then we still got numbers. And then you'd have, you know, some DC say, I'm not going to cover this guy. He can't go out for a pass. Well, now you've shortchanged yourself. You said, well, coach, they got three over three. Yeah, but this safety's at eight, nine, 10, 12 yards. He's not going to support on jet. He's not going to be able to support on a bubble. Okay. All right. So what did y'all say? How did y'all say y'all would line up to this formation? And these were like several. I had a bunch of y'all and I had to go through it. And that's why I didn't do it yesterday. I was going to make this video yesterday, but yesterday 
I was busy doing some things with the wife. We went on a road trip to some kind of flower show. No, don't, don't laugh. Okay. And um, the, my free time, I was actually looking at this, you know, on my phone, some of the things that y'all sent in and trying to, you know, so I wouldn't leave anybody out. There's a bunch of y'all that, you know, there was probably five, six, I think it was six ways I came up with that y'all sent in, but there was probably, there were several dozen people that responded either through direct message or whatever. And so you can see, here's one way right here. And I'm not going to comment on every one. I'm going to let y'all see them. You know, we usually talk about offense on here and here's some defensive talk. And by the way, four of my respondents were state championship defensive coordinators. Two of them were state championship head coaches. One of them was a member of the uh, his state's Hall of Fame, is a member of his state's Hall of Fame. And another one is going to be in the Hall of Fame, okay, when it's all said and done in his state. And he's not, he's retired from one and coaching in another. And so these aren't just, you know, anybody. These are well-qualified people that sent these in. So like I said, there were four. Okay, I, I think I got six of these. Four of them I know came from state championship defensive coordinators, and two of them came from Hall of, Hall of Fame caliber head coaches. And a bunch of y'all did the, that aren't these six guys I'm talking about sent in about the same thing they did. So you're in good company. We got smart people that watch football talk with Coach Chip, and they're not smart because they watch football talk with Coach Chip. They're just smart football coaches. So here's another one. Okay, this one here is three over three. Okay. Now remember, and it all varies. What do you know about the other team? Okay. What does film study tell you? Is the trigger man back here? Does he got wheels? You know, uh, if you want to, if he's more of a pass threat, you want to make sure you got, you're covered out here at trips. Okay. If he's a dual threat, then you may have to take your chances and just rally through the football on the bubble or, or, or the jet because you don't want to leave the box bare. Excuse me. Okay, here's another one. They're going. Um, and again, this is out, out of an. This one's from an even front. Okay, it's kind of similar to what um, UCLA did. And, you know, and, and most any defense that's sound can stop anything. But what it comes down to is you got to win battles, and that's the cool thing about spreading people out. Is now you spread them out. And if they lose a battle, if the defense loses a battle out in space, you got a chance to break something, to break a long play, to get a good play. But if, you know, if you're in tight and somebody loses a battle, somebody else can make up for it. But see, like if, if H makes his block here, I mean, R makes his block here, L makes his block here, okay, now it's just these two on a bubble. Okay, we're running jet, stalk, stalk, stalk. Somebody's got to win, okay? Somebody's got to win, and they can win and still not make the play because you got them in space. Does that make sense? He said, well, what about this free safety? Hey, I like my chances on a free safety coming from, or any DB coming from depth to tackle a moving target. Okay, that's not that easy. I know we see it on TV all the time, but we're not coaching on Saturdays or Sundays, you know. We're coaching on, you know, Friday nights, Thursday nights, in the afternoon if we're coaching junior high or middle school, okay? Oh, here's another. Now, this guy was bound and determined. I am not breaking my 3-3 stack. I know this coach. He's not breaking his 3-3 stack. He's not. You know, I, you'd have to just totally just vacate. If you're going to leave five in here, he's going to leave six. Okay. Now, his adjustment to motion was bump him back, bump him over, bring him down. And so now you're three on three. Somebody's got to win a block. Somebody's got to defeat a block to make the play if you run jet. Okay. All right, here's one. The guy already drew it. I already put it in there, the rotation. It's similar to the one I just showed you. But he did break his 3-3 stack. Put this cat out here. He's kind of apexing these two, kind of apexing these two, head up on the on the end man number one right here. 
And if he gets that jet motion, it's going to spin him down. That's going to give him hella numbers, okay, to stop the jet, okay? Again, it's all part of game plan. You can say, this is how I do it. But if you got a Cam Newton kind of kid back here, and I don't mean literally Cam Newton, but a high school version of a Cam Newton, a poor man's Cam Newton, if you will, your version of it, you know, that's going to change the way you look at it. Okay, it just depends. Because some of these guys said, this is how I would do it. They're just doing that like as a de facto, if I get this, don't know anything else about them. You got to know, who are they trying to get the ball to? The offense. Who's the most dangerous man with the ball in his hands? The Z or the quarterback? Okay. All right, here's another one. This is a 3-4 look. You know, we could, he's keeping his two safeties high. Okay. And I'm sure what he's got, he's got all kind of rules. If you get this, you get this, you get that. If uh, if he releases this way, yeah. I promise you that safety is probably key in this guy. If this guy comes off the block, this safety's spinning. Okay, he's coming. He's coming. Okay. And when the motion happens right here, he'll probably come over here. He'll rotate back to here. And again, this is all dependent on is this guy eligible? Now, by formation, he is. But by number, is he? You know, this isn't the 1960s anymore. You can't run tackle eligible unless the tackle has an eligible number. One DC told me, he said, hey, that's why I always have my DNs look. He said he practices it. He goes, is he 1 through 49 or now 0 through 49? Or is he 80 through 99? Is he eligible? And if he is, you yell, hey, this guy's eligible. And that can change things. You know, you don't want to over-rotate because this guy, they can slip him out right here. So those are things, too, that come into it. It's never as easy just looking at a picture and saying, this is what I'll do. You know, if you hold a gun to somebody's head and say, what are you going to do? You know, they'll tell you this is, you know, okay, this is how I'd line up to it just based on what I see. But there's other things that come into it. Now, this is a good way to line up to it if you're not too worried about the quarterback. You say, what do you mean? They got six in the box. But look, they're giving this counter look back up. Okay, because you'll get numbers on the counter because you get a down, down, back, pull, kick. And then a wrap will get him because you're going to down block the mic. But apparently this guy here is not concerned with the quarterback. All right, went a little bit long, had a lot to talk about on this. Be sure to like, as I said in the beginning, subscribe and share the channel with all your friends, especially if you like it. Okay, tell them about it. And if you don't like it, if you don't think it's worth your time, don't tell us so. Just pretend you never saw it. If you have any questions or comments or you want to tell me, show me how you would line up against it or what plays do you think you could run out of this crazy formation, which is real simple. Like I said, I've been doing it for years. Um, if you want, I'll, I can send you some video of us running it. Uh, I went back and looked it up after seeing this and, and I realized why well, I got the empty idea because that's the, what we did. And I noticed that uh, over about a three-year span, most of the clips were in the playoffs. So it's kind of thing I saved, I guess. I, it's been so long ago. But you can contact me at siegel.chip at gmail.com, and I'll be glad to, to correspond with you. And I had a guy the other day that sent me an email and said, damn, coach. He said, no response. I went, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't even see it. And then uh, – and then I answered it, of course, and and gave him, I hope, what he was looking for. Um, also, I'm at Chip Siegel on Twitter, and it's really the, the football talk with Coach Chip page is really taken off. It's gone from a little, you know, less than 200 to like 600, you know, in the last few weeks. And, um, and I sure appreciate all y'all that are on there. Share that, too, with all your coaching buddies, and we'll just keep the conversation rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. So be sure to do all these things I ask you to do because it doesn't cost you a thing but a few seconds to click. Just exercise your finger and click on it. Or uh, if you're on your computer, if you're on your phone, exercise your finger and just touch that screen. And I promise you won't get any spam. Uh, Google doesn't spam you. YouTube doesn't spam you. I will send you emails if you email me, but they're not anything me asking you for anything or or anything like that. And it's not MailChimp or some of these other email services. It's me sending you an email. Okay. When I come up with something that I think is kind of cool and I've had one guy 
Um, out of all these emails I've sent, I said, please take me off your email list. I, I didn't ask why. I just said, sure. I deleted him from my database. That's fine. Not a big deal. No harm, no foul. But be sure to do that. And uh, let's keep the conversation going. And until next time, hey, y'all, let's be elite.